Hello and welcome again to Chemin 3. The IB Chemistry Exam 2019 is happening in just a matter of 60 days from today. On the 22nd of May, you will be sitting for Paper 1. And on the 23rd, in the morning, you'll be taking Paper 3. Let's go in and take a look at some tips for this year's examination. And here you can see the times for each of the exams with the SL and HL paper 1 and 2 happening on the afternoon of May 22nd. And then you'd have that very important night of study to focus on your single option for paper 3 in the morning. The option entails work only on practical areas, data-based analysis, things like random errors, systematic errors, how you make a standard solution, how you propagate the error from a burette. These are the kinds of things that would come in section A of paper 3. And then, of course, your single option, bearing in mind that all of the questions from a single option must be answered. That is, all of the questions from A, B, C, or D. And section A is not to be confused with option A. Section A must be answered by all students and all students must choose one of the four options to answer all questions on. One night of study can make a huge difference in this option exam and you should prepare yourself to go home on the night of the 22nd and do a lot of work for this exam on the 23rd. But for paper 1 and 2, the core syllabus, preparation needs to be well in advance of the exam day. And my previous tips over the last two years provide lots of strategies to help you. But let's look now at one more approach to help you make a comprehensive sweep of the syllabus and a method that's guaranteed to help you to improve. First of all, you should sit for a multiple choice exam like this one here. This student taking the November 2018 HL multiple choice exam. And here you can see his scores. Having taught this particular student, I'm confident that he is currently in line to score a 4 on the IBHL exam. But look at the distribution of his answers. 13 out of the 20 here in the first 20 questions. Correct. But in the second half of this MCQ exam, only 6 out of 20. Then we have another sample. This particular student has been consistently scoring between 5 to a 6. And here you can see a similar pattern with many questions correct. 14 questions correct in 1 to 20 and just 10 correct in 21 to 40. And the reason for this is that these HL topics tend to be covered much more in 21 to 40. These HL topics were not the ones being assessed from the time you entered the IB program, but from the time you entered the IB program, you began with these areas in your first year. And at the end of the first year, these were the areas being assessed. Going into the second year now, we began to add more of these. And by the end of the course, all of these were quickly added. So you've had less time to become familiar with these topics. And in addition, these are the more difficult and challenging topics. So when you sit to study, it's useful to begin the syllabus in reverse and to spend a lot of time on your weaker areas, which most likely would be a topic somewhere between 14 to 21 if you're an HL student. So now for all students, whether you're SL or HL, what strategy should you use to go about making a comprehensive sweep of the syllabus that is guaranteed to help you improve between now and the May 22nd exams? Well, as I've indicated in previous tips, the MCQ, the multiple choice paper, is a very powerful tool for quickly assessing what you know and what you don't know. And when you realize that you don't know something, you should find where it belongs in the chemistry guide, read about it, and make sure that you master it. And when you find that you know something, you should quickly skip it over and move to another topic. Take for example, take for example, this question 32. Which compound forms both hydrogen and oxygen at the electrodes when a concentrated aqueous solution is electrolyzed? And the answer to this question is concentrated sulfuric acid. When this is electrolyzed, you get hydrogen 
and oxygen. When something like sodium chloride is electrolyzed and it's concentrated, then you would get chlorine at one electrode and hydrogen at the other. If it's dilute, then you would get hydrogen and oxygen. And if it's molten, then you'd get both sodium and chlorine. But where in the chemistry guide would you find this? And should this be the only thing that you study? Shouldn't you ask about all of these others? And if they don't form hydrogen and oxygen, what does silver nitrate form? And what does potassium iodide form? Because while this might have been the question in this exam session, the question could be twisted to test something else related to these four, but related to the topic of electrolysis. So what you should do is not just find the answer to one question, but use it and reflect on how new questions related to this one can be created and imagine what those questions can be. And then you should go to the chemistry guide and see where you can find this topic. And here you can see explanation of the products formed during the electrolysis of aqueous solution. Under guidance, if you go down to the page after this, you would see that some aqueous solutions are specified. And now you can check this off from your list of topics to study and move on to another question doing the same thing. Let's take another question. Which molecule contains a chiral carbon? To solve this question, you would need to draw the full structural formula looking for a carbon that is chiral or one that is attached to four different groups where each of these four groups are different like A, B, C, and D. But where in the syllabus is this? And here, if you can solve that question, you can quickly mark off this section. Chiral carbon is a carbon joined to four different atoms or groups. But before you leave it, you should ensure that you can draw many examples of chiral carbons. And in this way, you should go through doing as many multiple choice questions as you can and relating them to various sections of the syllabus. You would aim to cover all parts of the IB chemistry syllabus using multiple choice questions. And for every question that you do and you answer correctly, you should reflect on a possible alternative question related to that topic. Because if you practice with all of the nine exams set by the IB between the specimen paper of 2016 and the November exam of 2018, then you would have nine exams, which is 360 questions for an HL student and 270 for an SL student. And don't forget to click on the links to the cards above this video to access my tips from the last two years. And watch out for my next video, which is going to take a look at the report by the examiners on the November 2018 exam and to pull out three important tips for this year's examination.